Hello everyone, this is Brian McInerney, hydrologist with the National Weather Service located at the Salt Lake City Airport in Salt Lake City, Utah. This is a water supply briefing for the month of February and it's going to look at snow, precip, temperature, reservoirs, and water supply. Let's start with snowpack. When we look at snowpack from the valley to the mountains, there should be a 5 to 1 ratio, maybe a 10 to 1 ratio of amount of snow in the mountains to the amount of snow in the valleys, and that's not the case this year. During the month of January, the Salt Lake City Airport had 190% of normal snowpack, while up in Lake Fork Mountains at 10,000, almost 11,000 feet, they only got 84% of normal. The point being is that we have a great deal of snow in the valleys, but really not so much compared to average in the mountains. When we look at snowpack by basin, the y-axis is the snow water equivalent or the amount of water in the snow. The x-axis is October 1st for a full year to the end of September. The blue line is normal, the green line is this year, the red line is last year. And we can see the Bear River drainage is currently at 76% of normal. Moving down to the Weaver, they're currently at 81% of normal. Moving over to Six Creeks, and these are the mountains to the east of Salt Lake County, they're at 83% of normal. Utah Lake drainage includes the mountains to the east of Utah County and Provo at 83% of normal. Over to the Duchesne with the south aspect of the Uinta Mountains at 86% of normal. The Upper Green in Wyoming at 83% of normal. Lake Powell includes Colorado and areas of South Central Utah at 74% of normal. The Severe River drainage more south and a little bit more central eastern they're at 92% of normal and down in southwestern Utah near St. George, they're at 93% of normal. Now we're moving over to precip, October through January. Uh, we see October had some pretty good precip in northern Utah. When we move over to November, which only had one storm event, we can see it was, it was below average throughout the entire state for the most part. When we see December, we had some pretty good rain at the early parts, which produced rain up to 10,000 feet but not snow and we could have used the snow but the second half of December kicked in with very cold temperatures and a really good storm activity and brought us up to normal conditions by the end of December. Moving on to January, January had one storm event and one storm event at the very end so two total but you needed a lot more in January as a result the snow numbers lagged. Now we look at temperature anomalies and this is for the Salt Lake City Airport and when we look at the uh, temperatures, the blue lines up and down indicate anomalies. So for the first day of the month, we see it's about 7 degrees above normal. The second day is about 10 degrees above normal and so on. When you average up the entire month for the Salt Lake City Airport, it was 2.3 degrees above average for the month of October. When we look at November, it's very warm with the exception of maybe four days. And that's right when that storm occurred, the only one for the month. When we look at the average, 5.5 degrees above normal or above average for November. When we look at December, very warm until about the third week and then it started to mix up when we had those storms come through, 5.5 degrees also for the above average for December. When we look at January, this is when the inversion set in, the coldest air settled in the valleys including the Salt Lake City Airport. We see temperatures that were 15, possibly 20 degrees below normal except for the last week when we had some good storm activity. But when we look at the average, 10 degrees below for January. Here are some interesting facts that we had posted on our website here at the National Weather Service. And you can see it was all about cold and it was all about snow down in the valleys. Unfortunately, this didn't transcend up in the mountains where we really need it. Now let's take a look at reservoirs. This is reservoir data I obtained from the Bureau of Reclamation in Provo, which manages a good deal of the reservoirs in Utah. And the first column is the reservoir, the second column is February of 2012, the third column is February of 2013, this year, and then the change. And we can see that we have a lot less water in the reservoirs compared to last year. And that's just due to the poor runoff we had last year that filled up the reservoirs. We used a lot this summer. Now we're behind the game. Uh, also understand that Echo Reservoir had some work done on it. So it's 42% less 
That's a combination of low runoff from last year and some work that was done on the reservoir itself. Now let's look at water supply. Here's the area that we're going to forecast for. The areas that are warmer indicate below average. Yellow is about 70%. Red is less than 70%. So when we actually see what the forecast calls for, the yellow areas for the state for the amount of runoff that's going to come out of the mountains starting April 1st through the end of July, the volume of runoff indicates that we're forecasted to be about 70% of normal where the yellow areas are. The Weaver is about 65% of normal. Also areas of Colorado which have had a tough time getting any kind of storm activity over there are about 65% of normal. So below average runoff forecast. That's Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist with the National Weather Service. There's my phone number. There's my email. Give me a call. Drop me an email if I can do anything for you or if you'd like any additional information. I do appreciate you taking the time to listen to this briefing, and I'll do another one next month in March. Thank you.